at Sidecar and Jinx. And oh, I heard that place is legit. It's yeah, so it's amazing. cool. It's really cool. And so it just came up in conversation. Um, and then yeah. our brains started like, <laughs> and so for like two weeks straight, we're texting back and forth, like trying to figure out a name and we're trying to figure everything out. And then finally, we here we are. It. Here we yeah. are. You guys had the step, uh, stepbrothers moment. Did we just become best friends? Just, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think so. <laughs> Pretty much. I think Pretty so. Much. It's Bill Bunk beds now. Oh, have we? Oh, okay. Perfect. I like that you do that. He did that last time. Yeah, he just didn't. surprises us. Good yeah. thing I didn't drop the f bomb. <laughs> just kidding. You've so this is a non f bomb podcast. No, we are. You're free to say what you need to say to get your point across. Oh, yeah. dang it! I forgot my dad's over there. I can't. Yeah, say that. yeah. But we've got. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. We've got parental units here, so we're going to keep it. Yeah. Very we have a live it. studio audience. We do. Yeah, so this is the first welcome time, Welcome, right? everyone. <laughs> yeah, first time. Well, let me oh. welcome you to Tulsa oh, thank Uncut. You. And this yeah. is Stephen Hester. And yep. tell us a little bit about Stephen Hester. What do you do? Where are you from? Yeah, yeah. So um, so I basically moved to Oklahoma in early 2000s. Lived in Ponca City, so shout out the Shady 580. Woo! Um, nice. what, what? So actually, Titan Title has a. We do have yeah. an office there. Who's the broker? Who, who's who's the managing office person over there? I think um, she used to be my clo- used to close a couple of files for me in Owasso. I believe it's Misty. Is her name? I think that's her name. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, we've she got from, so many people over okay, there. Okay, you got a lot of people. Point, but yeah. yeah, it's it's that was kind of our exciting new adventure was yeah. opening Ponca, and you know what? I love Ponca City. What? Right. Here's here's the cool here's the cool. You're like the first person I have ever heard that said I like Ponca Wait, City. Ponca You're City welcome. is up like close to Kansas, right? Yeah, I mean we're like 15 minutes from Kansas. Near Newkirk? Small yeah, town? I mean like okay. 8 10 okay. minutes. But here's the cool thing. So we have like our industry here and because we're so kind of like spread out and pocketed and whatever, it's different. They're they're still like very hometown proud. Oh. Like everything that we do is yeah. like not what we do here like everything we do there are like small town like small town supporting mm. different fundraisers and different community out like they're so community driven they still that do is... parades bro like legit parades. really <laughs> yeah on uh on grand so it's our yeah. main street it's called grand uh no it's man it's honestly i was just kidding okay <laughs> uh Fox City is really 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 cool it's a good it was a great town for me to grow up in. what's yeah. the population um, there roughly uh, before Conoco Phillips moved out, it was probably probably close to thirty thousand. Now it's probably a little bit close, maybe twenty. Really? But so yeah, Conoco it was a, so Conoco actually originated in Ponca City, right? Um, and then Phillips and Conoco merged back in the early two thousands. Hence why I'm in Ponca City now. Huh. My dad worked for Phillips sixty six. Oh, cool. And so when that happened, the population was growing. They had a lot of great paying jobs. Mm-hmm. The refineries there in Ponca City. They have a refinery. And then uh, Conoco and Phillips demerged about 2008. Uh, that's when my dad got moved to Bartlesville. That's why he lives in Owasso now. And uh, but I stayed for my senior year. And nice. um, so so it's kind of one of those cities that population is starting to go down a little bit. But I think they're mm-hmm. striving still, doing pretty well. Yeah. On some different things. Well, isn't isn't Ponca City where there's a, a, a large large um, uh, mansion? What mansion like EW Marlin? No, no, no. Oh. Uh, where is the uh pipeline intersection? Oh, where's that talking, at? You're talking about um, oh gosh, that is big that, pipeline. You know what I'm talking is it about? Cushing, Cushing, Cushing. Cushing. Ooh, look at me with my smart geography. That's what it is. Are we playing what? Jeopardy here? What are we doing? <laughs> what is Cushing, Oklahoma? What, what is Cushing, Oklahoma? The biggest <laughs> pipeline in the world. Um, so yeah, so I, I, um, I grew up in Ponca City, then um, moved to um, Tulsa in 2012 uh went to school at osu tulsa and got i my won't degree. hold that against you no okay that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> so i graduated from osu tulsa and then um went into my field of uh, health education and promotion uh didn't really know what i was going to do with that but some one of my classmates ran a personal training gym said hey do you want to be a personal trainer i said well i'm going to college why not mm-hmm. uh you know stay you know do the fitness thing and 10 years later, I was still doing the fitness thing. So, cool. um, and then COVID happened and some other things happened and, um, got laid off from my job and got into real estate, uh, after door dashing for a little bit. Um, nice. so that's where I'm at now. I'm doing real estate. Um, love it. What Started brokerage working. are you with? I'm with Coldwell Banker. Very cool. Mm-hmm. Nice. Yep. I'm with Coldwell Banker, Coldwell Banker. So it's really, really, you know, great, great, um, great job. And I really, really love it. 
Yeah. Really love it. What were you doing when you got laid off? Yeah. So I was, um, so I worked for a company, uh, that was a small group personal training studio. Um, it was actually a startup company. We had one location on Brookside and then we grew that to three locations, one in Brookside, one South Tulsa, and then one in Broken Arrow. Um, and then, uh, yeah, so I was managing that, helped grow that, became operations manager, COVID happened. And, um, basically I was the highest paid employee at that point. So the ownership yeah. got together and said, uh-huh. Hey, we gotta let you go. Like no harm, no foul type yeah. deal. I didn't take anything, you know, personal with it. Yeah. Said, said, yeah no COVID whacked everybody. So yeah. Like, in yeah. some, in some capacity. It, it definitely did. I think a lot of people began, they, they started seeing what their like bad traits were. <laughs> Yeah, oh, yeah. a better word yeah. it brings out like your negative devices you know what I mean because like you're stuck you're in this place everything's closed down it's like life as a norm came to a screeching halt and I noticed a lot of depression bad behaviors mm-hmm. you know I, I know of a group of people that they were like trying to get together but it was like still surrounded by drinking because like what are you going to do all day when you're stuck inside right. the house having beverages yeah. all day and literally I went to one of their like work sessions and it was literally like nine in the morning and it was like powerhouse drinking all day. And I was like, Whoa, <laughs> my yes. liver can't do it. So it's funny you guys uh, brought up fate earlier because I believe you know, a, lot, a lot of bad things happened in COVID. Don't get me wrong. I mean, it's some horrible things happened yeah. to a lot of families. Um, but there was a lot of good things that happened to me personally during COVID. Um, so I'm a recovering alcoholic. Um, I've been struggling with uh, alcoholism since probably my early twenties. And, um, it's kind of, it's kind of crazy cause I can give you exact dates of when I discovered that I was an alcoholic and I started getting help. So the, when I realized personally that I had a problem with alcohol, it was September 29th, 2018. Um, wow. yeah, I basically something happened. My, my dad was there. Dad had to come pick me up at an event. Um, no one knew where I was. My son was just born two weeks prior. My wife's it was it was it was really really bad an year. eye-opening event for you yeah and there were several ones before that like me diving into a shallow end of a pool hammered and cracking oh my, my skull oh uh, my god me ruining my best friend's wedding because i passed out at the altar being his best man like oh but it's a lot of things were pointing but september 29 2018 was the day i was like all right i got i maybe have a drinking problem <laughs> but i, I really yeah. did um so What happened after that was I was trying to find my, what was going to work for me to trying to get sober. Mm -hmm. Um, So my dad at the time, or at the time, no, he's still my dad. (laughs) (laughs) My my, my dad said, hey, Steven, you want, because I was talking to my dad after I started getting sobered up uh, of basically, I remember back when me and you were training for a uh, basketball because I wanted to, you know, play collegiate basketball Mm -hmm. and it ended up not working out, but I trained really hard for two years. My dad would rebound for me. We would, you know, do different exercises and drills. And I loved, loved spending time with my dad. I loved, you know, basically exercising. Um, I also wanted to do an Ironman at some point. So uh, on September or September 30th, (laughs) 2018, my dad said, Hey, how about we train for an Ironman? And I said, Um. Dad, I don't know about it. He's like, Stephen, you're not getting any younger. You got a kid. You know, you got mm-hmm. two kids at this point. You know, they're going to get older. You're going to start doing kid sports. So I said, all right, I'll do it. So I looked up on Google uh, Ironman and Ironman events. There was an Ironman event in Chattanooga, Tennessee, in Chattanooga, Tennessee on September 28th, 2019. So a year you from. had one year. One year. Okay. So I said, that's fake. <laughs> I'm going to do it. Absolutely. So I train and I trained and it, for people that don't know what an Ironman is, it's a, it's basically a swim bike run combination. Uh, so you swim 2.4 miles, you oh bike a hundred and, uh, this, this it's normally 112, but this event it was 116 for them to get the loop right. And then you run a, a marathon. So 26.2 hours. Um, Bro, so, <laughs> so can I, we can we be three different people? Like, can we have people like tag it, tag into it? They do have those okay. relays, have those. but but it doesn't count. It doesn't count. <laughs> right, it doesn't yeah. count at all. You didn't really do an Iron Man if you were right. a relayer. I mean, I'm, I'm more like a maybe not iron, more like paper mache, bronze. And the crazy thing is, I only got a medal about this size. You know, I was thinking it was going to be like this size. Yeah. I got a cool T-shirt. This is finisher. Trophy. Yeah, I need a trophy or something. 
So you completed uh, an entire Iron so Man. So I completed an entire Iron Man, and I was sober. I was about to ask eight, you. So, yep. so you had a year to train, and mm-hmm. that was about at your aha moment, right, with – uh, your alcoholism were you did you just cold turkey it and then yeah really so we, we in, in the recovery in the recovery world we call it white knuckling it uh-huh. so i wasn't really a, sober did you go to a facility like how did you what, what how did that what so Tell us. so yeah so so basically during that time frame uh like i said i white knuckled it so i didn't really do anything to actually work on my sobriety i just said Hey, I'm not going to drink. Yeah. And I'm just going to leave it like that. So that worked for eight months. So I'm not yet to my Ironman yet. And uh, I went to a business event in uh, LA. And um, at that business event, I went on a binge. So the type of drinker I am, I'm not the type of drinker that drinks every single day. Um, I drink in excess over a, over a period of time. So mm-hmm. I can go sober three or four months. But once I have one sip of alcohol in my system, I'm off to the races. It's like a different person. Like Mm. I can't stop for about three or four days. Um, So I'm just completely hammered and useless for three or four days. So that happened to me while I was in California at this event. Um, We went to this uh, conference um, for the software that we use. Uh, Went out with a couple of vendors. They asked me to have, do you want a drink? I said, sure, why not? I can have one. No, I can't. I went on a three or four day binger. Uh, didn't get on my flight. <laughs> I was oh, stranded in LA oh my uh, for a day. Wife, obviously, super unhappy. Had to pay like 1500 bucks to get on a plane. Uh, anyway, so that happened about uh, a month and a half before my Ironman event, uh, which was super upsetting to me personally uh, because that was, I was really looking forward to crossing that. Mm-hmm. But hindsight i'm glad it didn't happen because i didn't have because if it wasn't going to be then it was going to be somewhere down the road because i didn't have the correct things at that time to stay sober i sure. wasn't really working my sobriety like the tools the tools exactly okay so so at that point you had or hadn't gone to like a, a th- like rehab or therapy no. okay mm-hmm. so this was totally on your own and you okay so you didn't have the tools in your toolbox right didn't okay. have my tools in my toolbox yet exactly right and by the way i'm not a professional I don't, i'm not a professional counselor i'm not a professional alcoholic anonymous but advisor you were a professional drinker but but i was a professional <laughs> drinker okay. and i was really good at that yeah <laughs> really actually no i was probably really bad at it uh, yeah. looking i mean you probably didn't want to do that, that kind of stuff either. uh but um so, so that happened. I did my Ironman. And the, once again, the type of drinker I was, I didn't have to drink every single day. So after September 28th, 2019, um, I went, you know, six months here, relapsed, four months here, relapsed. So basically between the September 20 or I'm sorry, September 29th, 2018, all the way up to May 27th, 2020, I drank a total of three times um so but once again those but three all times, three times were, were catastrophic right. catastrophic like bad mm. like wrecked my wrecked my car by the way i don't have a uh, a rap sheet luckily don't have a dui no, don't don't have any of that stuff should have had a lot of that mm-hmm. Sh- probably should have been dead should have uh yeah it, I, I drank and drove all the time which is really bad to say but it's just me being honest but like, you know honestly steven i think every like everyone has their nemesis and everyone has their story and it's i love when stories like this come out because honestly it shows that god has a bigger plan mm-hmm. he has favor over you because we can sit there and go you know you did this or i did this or trent did this and so many times we look back in hindsight and we're like i should be dead right like i've done this so many times i should be dead and it's really cool to see the transformation that it's been doing in you. Thank you. Know you. What I mean, so congratulations. I just wanted to thank say. you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, and I just, I'm very lucky. And, uh, and this is something that I learned in, in rehab, which we'll get to in a second, but God has a lot of grace and mercy, Absolutely. um, showed me a lot of grace and gave me a lot of mercy. And so, um, so COVID let's go let's fast forward back up to COVID. Um, <laughs> So COVID happened, lost my job. Obviously, I, I, I relapsed um, soon after that because 
something, all these things were changing. I had employees calling me saying, are we going to get a paycheck? I had clients saying, calling me, are we going to get refunds? Like right. what's going to happen to the gym? You know, blah, blah, blah. No one knew anything that was happening. Me coming from a management position, I was like, I don't know the answers either. And normally I have the answers or know how to get the answers to something. Sure, sure. And at that point I didn't, I didn't have any answers. Um, so worked around all that stuff, got laid off once again, no harm, no foul. Like I understand where they're coming from. No blood, bad blood, but still I put a lot of work and effort into that company for four years. And so I was a little sad. Um, and just having all those other things happen at the same time, I relapsed. Um, once again, very great time for me to relapse because I was part of a new church. Um, and, uh, and I'm not very religious. I'm just real. That's what I. That's mm-hmm. kind of what I tell people is I'm not. I'm not like this ideal poster child of being Christian. I still cuss. I still do things that uh, that I'm working on that you know probably not great. Um, I'm pretty but, sure that is the poster child <laughs> for followers. I, I'm pretty sure <laughs> yeah, right. that like if we just want to get down to the nitty gritty, didn't Jesus sit with like you mm-hmm. know prostitutes and thieves? And, yep. Okay, I was just making sure. Yeah. And drunken. Alcoholics. Yeah, so I feel like you're actually a really good poster child. Continue. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, so at that time we were starting, uh, we helped start a new church. Um, my pastor, uh, Scott Carlson, uh, with the Refuge of Wasso, was laid off from uh, his position at his other church because, um, not because he had anxiety and depression, but um, he, he was just going through a really depressive state and went through a couple of them during a couple of years period. So the church decided that they wanted to basically – find new leadership to move them into, yeah. you know, a new realm, which once again, no, 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 no bad blood. Um, cause my dad still goes to that church. Um, but, uh, so, uh, my pastor, pastor Scott decided he wanted to start a new church to where we're going to be more of like a hospital church. So we're going to seek out the people that are hurting. And our motto for our church is that we're a group of hurting people, uh, helping other hurting people through a relationship with Jesus Christ. So that's our, that, 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 that's our mission. Hmm. Um, and so during this time of me trying to get sober with me, keep on relapsing and things like that, um, I came to really uh, confide myself into my pastor at that time. And so he knew of all my struggles. My church knew of all my struggles. Um, I remember one time I relapsed, my pastor basically challenged me to get in front of the church and basically tell them that I, you know, relapsed. So, um, that's a little bit of a backstory, but going into COVID, uh, right after I relapsed, my wife was done. She was like, sure. Cause I mean, on the backside of this, yes, I was struggling with all these things, but then you have my wife who didn't sign up for this, right? Mm -hmm. She wasn't expecting to marry an alcoholic. Also, she has a brand new baby, uh, with Forrest. And then also at that point we found out she was pregnant. Um, oh dear. so that's where my head was at was like, I have this new baby coming. I don't have a job. So she kicked me out. So I went and stayed at hotel Carlson, which is my pastor's, uh, Scott Carlson. I call it hotel <laughs> Carlson, uh, stayed upstairs and, uh, me and him actually grew to have a really good relationship. I became part of the tech squad because during that time our church wasn't doing any, uh, in-person services. So, um, I helped do this online church, uh, through, um, basically YouTube and Facebook. And mm-hmm. that's how I learned all this tech stuff, uh, basically how to live stream. And so we did that. I basically go back home, start driving for DoorDash, killing it in DoorDash. Cause no one else wanted to drive because of COVID. I was like, I need to make money. Yeah. So it was awesome. Dude, it's actually really lucrative. I have like some realtor friends who they do it on the side and they're like, you don't understand. Like I legit can make like 800 to like $1,500 extra a month, like depending on how much I drive. Yeah. So they're like, if my real estate stuff is slow or I don't have a listing, like I'll go DoorDash. They make a lot of money. I'm like, what? I've heard of people will be DoorDashing and also like Ubering kind of at the same time. Like, yeah. So really at, fascinating. at that time, everyone was ordering out because of sure. COVID. That, that's all yeah. we could do. That's all you could do. So I was like, sign me up. I'm doing DoorDash. So I was making like $35 an hour at the time. It was that's awesome. awesome. Wow. What do you drive? Uh, I drove a Ford Focus. Perfect. Uh, Great so on gas. Great yeah, gas. Yeah, I was like 35 <laughs> miles to the gallon. I just cruised and it was, it was awesome. It was really, really good. So I was doing that for a couple of months. Um, pro- uh, actually, I know exactly when. I was doing that all the way up to uh, May 27th. <laughs> Uh, actually, it's May 26th because May 27th is the first day I got sober. Um, and I relapsed again. Don't know why. That's the thing we can talk about with alcoholics is why we do the things we do. Um, 
It's just where we have a disease, basically. So relapsed again. Wife kicks me out again. Says, we're done. Go. You can't stay here. Also, by the way, the reason why I stay at Hotel Carlson and not my parents' house is because I have this great timing to do relapses when my parents aren't in town. Well, of course. <laughs> so so uh, some people might be asking, why do you not just stay at his parents' house? Well, I would have, but my parents weren't in town because I do this when they're out mm-hmm. of town. And uh, so I'm back at Hotel Carlson. On the back end of that, for that month period between my first relapse uh, post-COVID and my second relapse, my pastor was setting up a group called a recovery group at my church. It's basically like an AA group, but um, but it's more Christian. It's yeah. Christian-based because with AA, their their higher power is basically whatever you want it to be. They don't yeah. say Jesus or God. Sure. They just say whatever your higher power is. So he was basically uh, creating celebrate a 12... Celebrate recovery. Is that what it was? Exa- exactly like a celebrate recovery, but... I'm two for two. Man, how do, you, <laughs> how do you know about celebrate recovery? Because our church had one. Oh, so we had a, yeah, we had, church? So I was at Faith Church in Glenpool. Okay. okay. And so we had a celebrate recovery, and it was amazing. Yeah. yeah. So cel- shout out celebrate recovery. They got great ones at uh, Southern Hills Baptist down in Tulsa. They have a great one on As- in Asbury, and they also have one in Owasso, so... If you need and look for help, that's a great place to go. Or you can go to uh, our church one, which is on Tuesday nights at 630 at the Refuge of Wasso. Um, great place if you're if you're hurting. So it's called the Refuge. Yeah, that's, that's the, the name of the church. Called, yeah, the name that's of the a church. good name. Yeah, the Refuge. I like that. It is. I and like good I like the whole vibe of what they're doing. Hurting people, helping hurting people. I mean, because yeah. that's the thing, is I think that a lot of people they're hurting and they don't know where to go and they don't want to go to a rehabilitation center. They don't want to go to therapy. They don't want to go to, it, it's like they want to go somewhere and almost be unnoticed, but accepted. Yeah. Right. Do you know what I mean? Oh, hundred. Yeah. A- until they feel safe. And so it sounds to me like what the refuge is doing is creating a space where they can walk in and they can be as seen as they want or as unseen as they choose. That, that, that is. Yeah. So I went to a celebrate recovery and, um, this was, between obviously before I got sober, um, but I went to a celebrate recovery and the way I felt and the way that things were happening there, I actually talked to uh, a, a guy outside of celebrate recovery as we're leaving. I said, I wish churches were like this because mm-hmm. when I feel like when I go to a church, I feel like I have to, people have these masks yeah, and they put on this different persona, this different mask when they enter church. And then when they leave church, they put back on another thing. I want people right. to be once again real, not religious. I want people to be. I want to. Sh- I want to see the real you because I'm going to show you my real self too. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, with the refuge of being a startup church, that was my main mission. I said, "Hey, I'm going to be open." And so, I've been very open with my church of when I fall and what my struggles are, or try to be. And uh, so, when when that celebrate recovery, when I had that thing in my head, like, "Oh, I wish churches were like that." That was about the time the the uh, the refuge was born. Wow. And so, I was like. Oh, this is exactly what I needed and wanted. Um, so my pastor, like I said, about a couple of weeks before I uh, relapsed again, May 26, uh, he was starting in this recovery group for me. <laughs> so this is called the recovery group. And it was basically, all right, how are we going to get Stephen sober? <laughs> how are we going to get this guy sober? <laughs> You'll be the case study. Yeah, here. we'll be the case study. But also he made a relationship with a guy out of Oklahoma City that was a basically kind of like a um, – alcoholic, anonymous, uh, drug advisor, counselor. And uh, they were talking about this place down in Purcell, Oklahoma, called Rob's Ranch, which is a recovery center. So relapse on May 26th, woke up May 27th, super hungover, still drunk a little bit. 2020, um, right? 2020, COVID, yep, okay. yep, 2020. And my get called downstairs because I'm upstairs at Hotel Carlson, and my wife, uh, Scott and another member from our church is sitting in the living room. So I'm like, Oh boy, great. My bro. worst, my worst thing, an intervention. Like this is the thing I was not looking forward to. Uh, this is going to be great. So, uh, my wife sat me down and I, I thank her for this. Cause if it wasn't for what she did, I probably wouldn't have gone, but she said, either you get sober, I'm taking the kids and we're leaving. Wow. And I said, well, I guess I really don't got an option. So I guess, Jesus. uh, so oh, let me take it back. She said, you're going to Rob's ranch or I'm leaving. So not if I get sober, she said, you're going mm. to Rob's ranch or I'm leaving. So I'm like, Oh gosh. Okay. All right. Rob's ranch. It is. 
So at the time, she said it's a 90-day facility, 90-day facility. I didn't, it didn't comprehend with me at that point because I was like, all right, she, mis, she misunderstood. It's probably really a 30-day because I never heard of a 90-day rehab. Mm -hmm. And so we're driving down. Was uh, this the same day? The, the, so this was May 27th. Okay. So um, the thing with Rob's Ranch is that uh, they don't have a detox center. So I had to be a certain amount of days sober okay. before I could go to Rob's Ranch. Okay. And so, um, and with detox centers, like basically when you're coming off of alcohol, it's like one of the most dangerous drugs to come off of because yeah. uh, you could die, um, which I didn't really, I thought I was having like alcohol induced anxiety. I was really going with withdrawals with all my times I binged and I was coming off of, you know, uh, you know, being drunk was I was actually going through withdrawals and I thought I just had a little bit of anxiety. So thank gosh, nothing bad happened during that time uh, with me co coming from withdrawals. So uh, that happened on May 27th. So my first day at Rob's Rants was on June 1st. Um, so my, once again, my dad was still out of town um, taking care of uh, my grandparents down in Texas. And so Pastor Scott drove me to Oklahoma City, um, which I give Pastor Scott, I love you. He's <laughs> one of my saving graces. Um, means a lot to me and my family. So he drove me down to Purcell, Oklahoma, and uh, dropped me off. And so I had a bags that were uh, care bags, like, uh, you know, clothes, uh, sheets, food, all that stuff from women at my church. Uh, they all went out, basically grabbed stuff for me for where, my 90-day adventure. Wow. Oh, and the, by the way, while we're driving down there, I looked at my – uh, Scott, I said, uh, how long am I here for? He goes, 90 days. And I'm like, that's, th that's three months, dude. That's like, oh my gosh. So, and that's with basically limited amount of TV, no cell phones for 90 days, which sounds kind of nice, right? No cell phones for 90 days. Um, and basically just working on yourself for 90 days. Wow. So we get down to, uh, Rob's ranch, have all my care stuff, have a guitar. Cause I decided I was going to learn how to play guitar. And I told myself, I'm going to do my time. Kind of, I'm looking at, I'm looking at this. You're like, like this jail. is basically like prison. Yeah. That's yeah. the way I'm going to look at this. <laughs> yeah. I'm going I'm to look at this like, I'm going to do my time. I'm not going to make any friends. I'm just going to do my 90 days and get out. <laughs> that lasted about two hours. Um, <laughs> so uh, so when I got there in my head, I'm like, all right, I'm going to be here and here with a lot of drug addicts, a lot of people in prison. All right. So I just want to make sure that I have someone that wasn't on any hard drugs like heroin or something. And I don't want to be teen. I don't want to be room date room roommate up with someone that's been to prison. Um, and someone that can look like they can beat me up. Yeah. That's all I got. <laughs> so I got <laughs> a, uh, I'm not gonna say his name, but is a, he's a, he's a heroin addict, been to, been to prison, been to jail. And he was about a year older than me and was just ripped. So and was that like, was your sure. roommate? That was my roommate. Your worst nightmare. You, you know, yeah. like, all I hear is it's like, oh, you want to tackle your fear of alcoholism? Good. We're also going to help you tackle your fear of people who have done drugs and went to prison. You're right. welcome. Yeah. Right. And that's, that's the thing. That, that was a misconception in my head because I just dealt with alcohol. I never dealt with hard drugs. Um, so I had this total false narrative over heroin users because there were IV users and that they were like, real, I, I don't know. I had some really bad thoughts, but those, but that time at Rob's Ranch, they were no different than I was. The only wow. difference is, is that their drug of choice was heroin and my drug of choice was alcohol. That was the only, only difference. We struggled with the same things. Um, and so it was really, really cool. So I actually got in there with three, uh, two other, two other guys came in on the same day. Uh, also, this is in the middle of COVID. So normally the facility can have up to 40 people. Uh, we had about 20, we had 18 when I got there hmm. because of COVID. Yeah. Um, so they wasn't really doing really well. Also, they restricted visitation. So we didn't have visitors on the weekend, which was actually in hindsight really good because we really got to depend on each other. Because wow. what I've heard from the people that worked there was people kind of, you know, got close over the week or during the week, but on the weekends, family, friends, yeah. wife, kids would come into town. And then you, they just spend all the time with, you know, the families. But during that time, we really had to lean each lean on each yeah. other as a group uh, because we didn't see family for, I think, I think I didn't, I think my dad didn't come visit for like 45 days or so. 
Wow. Um, so well, it kept you even further from the outside world. Yeah. Because even on the weekends, you yeah. couldn't. Yeah. Yeah. No cell phone. No social media. Mm. No TikTok. <laughs> um, <laughs> no TikTok. No TikTok. Whoa. How could you? As my, yeah. as my kids would say, they do this, what? <laughs> what do you mean? That's exactly what no my daughter TikTok. does. Okay, how old's your daughter? She is 11. Okay, mine is 13, and, and yeah. that is a, a very common response. In my no, family. she's 10. I had to think, she's 10, I'll turn 11. <laughs> yeah, nice. it's, it's the what. The power yeah. of the what. What? I'm like, yeah. what do you, why do you say it like that? Yeah. What are you doing? <laughs> What are you doing? It's like a bad Doritos commercial. Right. Anyway. So we so we came in. I basically came in with two other guys checked in the same day I did because it's a revolving door. So people check in, mm. you know, every couple of days. Um, so one was my roommate. Um, the other one, uh, his nickname was Big Mike. Um, probably the one of the wisest guys I've ever met. Um, he was an athlete in high school. Um, grew up in the Purcell area. Um he went to uh, went to prison at age eighteen, Oof. and he served uh, commu- uh, all together. He served twenty seven years wow. in prison, and uh, yeah. his his outlook in smart one, one of the smartest guys I've ever met. He just was so in tune, but he just struggled or he had this disease of addiction, and that was one of the things that was holding him back. So uh, he was actually my workout partner. <laughs> so. Nice. Um, <laughs> it's so funny. So I remember the first day we get there, I'm like, oh my gosh, that guy is really big. That's why we called him Big Mike. I was like, he's kind of scary, <laughs> a little bit of intimidating. Um, he had like this big scar across his chest because of a uh, <laughs> dude's crazy. So when he was in prison, he was on the yard and he had this, uh, he's obviously part of the gang because when you're in that type of situation, you want to be. Um, that might be the only you, way you survive. Right, yeah. Exactly. So he's part of this gang. And not that I've been to prison. <laughs> Let me clear no, that you up. Just, you watch that 60 days or 60 days yeah. in. or 60 day lockdown. Yeah. yeah. So really he good. had this huge car, but I guess what happened is he was in fight with this rival gang. And when they're on the yard, somehow this person snuck in a sharpened lawnmower blade. Oh so a lawnmower God. blade sliced him. He had to be air vacked out of the, to be survived. And he said the only reason why he survived is because he had to go to the bathroom really bad. And he just wasn't going to go to the bathroom on himself. So I guess by him constricting, oh yeah, because he didn't want to go to the bathroom on himself, is and he said he saw a lot of people um, pass away in prison because of things, and that all of them either you know defecate on themselves or pee on themselves. So he's like, all right, if I hold this in, so I don't, focus, I can. You I know, I'm like, how do you sneak in a lawnmower blade? That's a great Aren't those question. Oh, kind of uh, there's yeah. a lot. Yeah, I've learned. Because a lot of the people... <laughs> I mean, I, I don't really want to know. It could be something oh, I never yeah, want. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to end no, here. We won't like, go there. It's fine, but I'm just... I, I yeah. picture... It's I mean, I don't impressive. know how big a lawnmower blade is, clearly, because I, I don't look at them. But yeah. Yeah. I would assume they're that they're big. It's I, like a, I would it's imagine. It's like a samurai sword. Yeah. <laughs> oh. It's like a samurai sword. It's like... Yeah, it's like this size. Like what? That's just my kneecap down. I got a fake leg. Like, yeah. how do you sneak it in? Yeah. I, I don't so know how bizarre. they sneak in all that stuff, but the it's it was, it was a very eye-opening experience because... Uh, with me going in there, um, I thought I was the only one struggling with alcoholism. I thought I was the only one in the whole entire world that had the perfect childhood because I did. My parents raised me well. Um, they were supportive. They did everything that uh, I hope to do with my kids. Not like not just a little bit of this, little bit, I, everything that they did for me was a perfect childhood. I was student council president in high school, was very involved, did sports, was part of a church. Was into I mean, fitness. I was went into to fitness, college. went to college, graduated college, had a good job. And if you looked at me, and it's it's uh it's 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 one of those things where I tell people that I'm an alcoholic, they're like, Whoa, I never pictured you as an alcoholic. Mm-hmm. Um, which I don't take offense to that at all. And um, I think that they just just don't know what alcoholics are supposed to look like. Sure. So what is an alcoholic supposed to look like? Uh, because I met a lot of men in Rob's ranch that uh, that were dealt really bad hands and had every excuse to be, you know, on some type of substance. Yeah. Um, and I also I met men that uh, were just like me, had the perfect, they just, they suffer from a disease called addiction. And, so um, they look at the whole unit as what, whether you're addicted to alcohol, drugs, sex, whatever it is, 
it's just the addictive personality. Yep. It, I mean, it's, I guess it's not even a personality. It's an addictive disease, I guess. Yep, you're, you're right. It's a, it's, 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 it's a disease. And the one thing about this disease is that it's, uh, it's non, non-curable. I will, I will always be an alcoholic. I will never be able to have a drink for the rest of my life. Um, which some days when I say that to myself, I'm like, damn, that's a long time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> God, cause I, I love drinking. Yeah. I love it. I right. would. Yeah. I love it, but I can't. So the way I look at it now, and this is one of the first things that I learned while I was in rehab was I'm going to look at it one day at a time. So yeah. today yeah. I'm not going to drink. Right. I'm not worried about tomorrow. Today I'm not going to drink. Tomorrow will come. Yeah. And then the second thing I learned was I'm going to surrender every single morning. So every single morning um, I pray and I say, God, please not let me drink today. Super simple, nothing real fancy. I say, please don't let me drink today. Give me uh, the comfort. Give me the yeah. the wisdom and give me the avenues where I don't have to, you know, I don't have to drink. So those are the two things that I basically started with my road to recovery was take one day at a time and then also um, surrender every single morning. Yeah. So I absolutely love that. So how do you, because I mean, it's no secret in our industry. It's, it's kind of a thing. It's very commonplace. Um, yeah, you know, you happy have hours brokers opens, happy hours, different yeah. things. How do you, how do you do that? Like, yeah. because it is an everyday thing. So it's an every day by day, because I assume that you go to all those things. You're, you know, a successful realtor. Thank um, you. And so Take that. <laughs> my, my thing is, is you're going to these events. So how does that impact affect how do you do it? Yeah. So when I first got sober um, and I got out of rehab, I just totally took an approach of I'm not going to be around because I'm not ready. Sure. Um, so probably for my first uh, first year, I just, if there was alcohol being served, once again, I don't have a problem with alcohol. There's a lot of people that can handle it responsibly. I can't. I can't do it. I can't handle mm-hmm. it responsibly. I can't, you know, just have one. That's not me. So for, you know, some people that, or my friends that are hearing this for the first time, and they're like, oh my gosh, I drank in front of him like two months ago. Like, yeah. not, not a big deal. Not a big deal. I, 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 uh, I'm okay with it because, um, because, yeah, they're, they, they handle it responsibly. But to answer your question, um, I did, wasn't around it for the first year. And then there's some days when I was, all right, I'm feeling good. I got a good support system. I'm in the right mindset, not having any bad thoughts. And I can be around it. Now, there's days that I can't. So if I'm really struggling that day and my buddies want to go out and go to a restaurant, they're going to have a couple of beers. I know they probably have a couple of beers. Mm-hmm. I just I said, hey, guys, I can't go. Sure. Um, just not mentally there. Today. So it's doing almost like a self check in before you agree to go into right. those environments. You're like, okay, where am I at mentally? Where am I at emotionally? Where am I at physically? Like, what's happening with me? So you have to like check yourself before right. you got to be honest. Yeah. But you're past that point now. Now you can be around it. Yeah, I can be. I can be around it. Now there's some days I'm not. I can't. Mm-hmm. I mean, once again, this is a disease that I'm going to have to deal with for the rest of my life. Sure. Um, and uh, there, I guess there's no like magic pill even though there's are pills out there that I've tried that don't really work. Um, <laughs> we won't name <laughs> yeah, those. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. So, um, so there's no magic pill. So I just always have to take an honest account of, of my life. And also there's another thing in rehab that I learned was I need to basically fast forward the tape. That was one of the, the, the things we learned was, all right, if I went out and drank today, four what? hours from now, what's yeah. going to happen? Right. I can tell you what I'm gonna have, what's gonna happen. I'm gonna have one drink, then I'm gonna have two, then I'm gonna have three, then I'm gonna find some way to get some liquor. I'm gonna get some of that. I'm gonna leave the event, drive drunk, go to the liquor store, buy a Tavarsky Red Cap 100. Not because I can't afford the other stuff, it's because it's easy con- to conceal. Uh, also, it's 100 proof, so I can get drunk faster. I'm gonna put that in my car, put it underneath my driver's seat, uh, um, driver's or uh, sorry, passenger seat um, chair. I'm gonna go home. I'm going to take a couple of swigs, go inside, hopefully my wife's asleep, sit, watch TV, and that, and then I'm just going to be off to the races. Like, I can tell you exactly what I was going to do because I planned it out. Yeah. So if I'm doing that, if I'm if I'm planning out something, then I pick up the phone and call somebody. Like, 
hey, I'm planning stuff out right now. Once again, just taking an honest inventory. Yeah. Um, so I have to fast forward that tape and know that um, that doesn't this sound very help. fun. Yeah. I'm not going to do that. Um, so that really, that is one of the tools that I use that really helps me, but also having a really good support system. Um, so you said that you would have a couple of drinks and then switch, switch to liquor. So is it like you start with beer? Oh, no, I start with whatever. Okay. <laughs> whatever, whatever well, because whatever. I know some people whatever. who are, you know, either trying not to drink or whatever, they'll drink like non-alcoholic beers. Tried that. Okay. So Tried that. that. doesn't work. No, because I have the non-alcoholic beer and I'm like, oh, it's, it's not, not real beer. Yeah, it's not doing anything. Or I'm going to start, or I'm just going to drink beer because I, I like the taste of beer. That's a load of bull crap. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like the taste of beer. I just say yeah. that to myself because uh, I want to keep drinking. Yeah. Um, I remember, yeah, I remember I went to this counselor before I went to rehab that uh, I basically, that was my argument. Looking back at all the conversations I had with people that mm -hmm. trying to convince that I was an alcoholic, it's almost, it's kind of laughable sometimes because <laughs> I'm like. You know, I think it's really cool though, like looking around, I think a lot of places have evolved and, and seen it. I mean, whether people are alcoholics or, or not, whatever, but there's people who just don't want to drink. Yeah. And like, it's so weird because there's, if I don't want to drink, why is that so offensive to other people? Like I have more yeah, people being like, people do well, get oh my offended. gosh, what do you mean? You're not going to have a drink? Why wouldn't you yeah. drink? Why You're not going to have a drink with me? Come on. I'm mm -hmm. like, bro, like I don't. Just tell me you're an alcoholic. It makes them feel so bad. <laughs> I might start to listen. <laughs> yeah, I just tell them I mean, I just, because, because <laughs> in, for the most part, um, what I realized was that was type of the mindset that I had was I don't want to be rude when I went out to, you know, visit places sure. and things like that. I didn't want to, you know, I want to be part of the group. What I realized is most of the people that I surrounded myself with um, really just wanted me to be there. They mm -hmm. wanted the fellowship. Yeah. They didn't care about the alcohol. The alcohol is just part of it, but really they just wanted to fellowship with me. They wanted me to be part of their talk, you know, whatever. Um, so what I've realized is when I tell people like, oh, no, I'm good. I'm, I'm fine. I don't, I don't drink. They're just like, okay, cool, whatever. I think it's, it's definitely becoming like a whole thing. Um, because like even restaurants and bars or whatever they serve mocktails mm -hmm. which i'm obsessed with mm -hmm. like i can't get enough of mocktailing because yeah. i'm like you get some really good stuff especially when you're like yo bartender look just make me something fun they're like oh i get to be creative and by yeah. the way you can hold the alcohol wait no alcohol mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> yeah no soda big water deal. please i don't like tonic <laughs> <Thank> <laughs> that's funny so question yeah why are you talking about it publicly a lot of people are embarrassed you know yeah yeah so you saw this as I don't know how often you've talked about this, but I guess it's the first time. Really? So you saw this as an opportunity. Ever. I'm going to take this platform to, you know, I mean, tell a very vulnerable, yeah. vulnerable story that most people couldn't do. Why? Yeah. Why do tell that? them the story that you had told me, like how this kind of even happened um, from when you kind of acknowledge the story that you told me. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then I'm going to tell you a story about me getting out of rehab because I think that's another big point, but I'll, I'll tell us. I'll, I'll talk about this real quick. So I get out of rehab. And, um, and you know, I'm, I'm just going through it. I said, all right, I just want to make sure this thing sticks. So I'm not going to talk about it for a year. Hmm. Like I'm going to, I'm going to make sure that I'm sober, which was probably a really bad decision. I probably should have started talking about it right off the bat, but hindsight, I'm still sober. That, I'm really happy about that. So, yeah. um, so I waited a year and then once my first one year came up, um, talked about talking about it, but I just wasn't emotionally ready yet. And well, like you said, I just, I was growing a business and I was afraid what other people were going to think. Like, sure. what are my clients going to think? What are, you know, what are friends going to think? Like, um, I'm not going to do that, but I was very open with it in, within my church family, um, with my family and my recovery group. Um, I was part of different couple of AA me meetings at the time. So I was, I was open about it, but I wasn't open about it to the public. Um, over, um, over the, about a year and a half later, during our recovery groups, um, this new lady to our church joined. Um, she was an alcoholic. Um, she was like me. She loved to drink. Um, and she bank became part of our church and joined our recovery group. And from her first week, so she was sober for seven days, and she made a post on Facebook and said, hey, I just want everybody to know that I'm sober for seven days, and I'm really proud of myself. That's and I was awesome. like, what? It's mm -hmm. so like, that's amazing. But the next amazing thing was all the comments that came in uh, and all the DMs and messages that she received from other people that were struggling with the same thing. 
Yeah. Like this lady, um, first off, took the biggest leap of deciding that, hey, I'm new to this area. I got to get sober for my kids and my husband. And uh, she's also taking care of her in-laws. And I'm going to get sober. It's taking that first big leap. Then also being so open with all the things that kind of happened in her life. Yeah. And then saying, I'm going to post this for everybody to see. And she's has helped so many people in seven days that I feel like I could have helped. But once again, I'm not saying that as a regret. I'm just saying that looking back um, and the reason why I'm doing it now. So she actually just hit one year um, the, about two, three, three months ago. I'm so proud of her. She just hit one year. And so I was, um, so after she hit one year, I was like, all right, I got to quit making excuses. I got to figure out how I'm going to be open about it, what I'm going to do, how can I reach people? And I, I was reaching people on a personal basis. So I would have conversations, you know, at, you know, at the store, if I felt like the Lord was, cause I'm a believer, felt like if the Lord, you know, called me to say something to someone, um, or, you know, I met some, a client that was moving to town. I felt like, you know, I should tell him, uh, tell my story. So mm-hmm. I was helping him on an individual basis. And yeah. that was great. I've, yeah. I've helped a couple of people get help. Um, a couple of friends that I met in rehab that, you know, relapsed. I was able to help them too. Um, so I was like, all right, I'm going to do something at the beginning of the year. Like I'm going to do something like it is time. So I was flipping through Facebook and I got this request for Tulsa Uncut. Mm-hmm. Like, that's a podcast. That looks pretty cool. So I watched the <laughs> watched the entry entry episode, and I uh, I think at that time you maybe had one guest on. And I was Daniel, like, yeah, the, the, the Daniel, uh, yeah, Danelle Newman, Danelle. Yeah. yeah. And so I watched them, and I was like, man, that's and, and you guys asked really good questions, and that was one of the things that I really wanted. To, uh, you know, if I was going to go somewhere, I want someone that's going to ask good questions yeah. that are good. Uh, good host, which you guys are phenomenal. So well, thank you. So, good thank job you. to you guys. Uh, and also your tech guy is amazing too. <laughs> sound, is quality, sound quality <laughs> is on point. Um, so I was like, man, I really like to be on that podcast. So after I was added, I followed both of you guys on Facebook, uh, followed both of you guys, I think on TikTok and other places. And I just DM'd it. I was like, all right, this is what I got. I got all these followers on YouTube. I got all these yeah. followers on Instagram, TikTok. Like, what do I need to do to be on your podcast? Um, and I wasn't planning to talk about it real estate at all because I knew you were with Titan Title. Mm-hmm. So that was another thing. I was like, oh, she might know Kim Plunkett. Maybe I can get in on that end. So <laughs> I, I was, do know Kim Plunkett. And she's fantastic. <laughs> yeah. So she's out of the Wasso. Uh, she's awesome. She's one she of she, she, She's my closer. But um, so I was like, all right, I'm going to get in there. So I just DM'd you guys. And then you called me, Yeah. Uh, you know. And basically said, hey, we don't want to have all these realtors, you know, on the podcast, just talking about real estate. We want to get real and deep. Right. And I was like, that's that. exactly <laughs> what I want to do, uh, which was again, nothing wrong about talking about real estate or anything like sure, that. Yeah. It's just you guys are wanting to get to the yeah. real stuff. Sure. And I was like, that's what I want to do. Um, I want to talk about the real stuff. Yeah. I always say, um, like, we're putting the real in real estate. Like yeah. we want to know more. Like we get to see all the cool fanfare stuff and it's super fun and we all, we love each other, but like there's more, there's so much more to every individual realtor, mortgage lender, insurance agent. Yeah. You know, there's so many stories that I'm like, I want to know more. Yeah. Yeah. Then, I mean, if you guys want a list of like the top 10 bars to go to, I got you. <laughs> <laughs> no, they probably, they've, they've changed a lot since the last three years. So, uh, but no, so I was in rehab for 90 days. Um, got to work on myself a lot. Uh, learned the 12 steps. Um, got to, uh, go to a whole bunch of small groups. Rob's ranch is amazing. Um, it's, uh, if you ask my dad, it's one, it's his best investment he's ever made, uh, in me. He's uh, Rob's Ranch for 90 days is fifteen thousand dollars. Wow! And uh, my and you parents, went to college. And I went to college, right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I went to college. And uh, if you ask my dad today, uh, it's the best investment uh, he has ever made. Because actually, I asked him at one point because he helped me buy this YouTube course. Because when I started, well, once I got out of rehab, uh, I was going to do you, YouTube to get clients. Mm-hmm. And so I convinced my dad. I was like, Hey, you, you know, you, you, you lend me three fifty. Um, I'll buy this course and. I won't have to live with you in a year after because mm-hmm. <laughs> right. it comes to houses. And so, um, so I got really successful in real estate off of YouTube. I mean, I've sold a lot, a lot of houses and I asked my dad, I said, Hey, is that probably the best investment you ever made? He said, no, he said, Rob's ranch is my best investment. Wow. I've ever made. Oh, I like, oh. That's so sweet. Wow. So, um, 
So, so went to Rob Brands for 90 days, met a lot of great people, uh, built my tool belt, like you mm-hmm. said earlier. That's where I met my, got my tool belt. Tool belt. Um, but something really, um, really bad happened to me two weeks before I got out of rehab. Um, I was in small group at uh, 1030. So our, one of our small groups from, goes from 1030 to um, 12, and then we go have lunch. Uh, it was Tuesday, so we were having sandwiches. Um, and uh, a guy from our rehab, um, I'll just call him JJ, uh, but he works at the rehab facility and he has no arms. But he's really good at golf and he's really good at video games. He was like what? ranked top for uh, Madden and uh, Xbox Live or something like Stop. that. Stop. Kid you not. How did, okay, no. I'm going to ask, I, can, a, I mean, how? How? So he plays with his feet. Dude. That is so dope. And he's he's a this. really good golfer. That's amazing. Really how, good. Okay. So I want to see how it. How do you? How does so he, he has it underneath his armpit. So he has a little bit of a little bit of an arm right okay. there, but uh-huh. he uses armpit. Wow. Wow. So yeah. what's your excuse? Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> Why? Yeah. That's yeah. a good question. So, uh. And the other great thing, and I forgot to mention this too, at Rob Ranch, everyone that. Is that Rob's Ranch uh, that works there? From the counselors to uh, check-in managers to the operations manager to the CEO uh, to the owner. Well, actually, the owner, um, uh, Dick. Um, oh gosh, I forgot his last name. I can't believe I forgot his last name. Uh, his son was a was an addict. That's the reason why he started Rob's wow. Ranch. Rob, uh, Rob was his son, so that's who he was named after. Oh, cool. Um, but uh, everyone that works there besides the chaplain or the pastor, which is Pastor Steve, uh, are all addicts. So from the counselors to the cooks yeah. wow. to everybody is an addict. So JJ was a, was a, uh, was an addict. And so he comes in to our small group and says, Hey, Steven, I got a phone call for you, um, at the office. Uh, can you come with me? And we're in a small group. So I got excused, went up to the office and it was my wife on the phone. And, um, she, uh, she had a uh, miscarriage. Oh. So, uh, like I said, I was, when COVID happened, my wife got pregnant. Um, and uh, so it was one of those things where I'm like, why? I'm about to get out of rehab in two weeks. My daughter was going, or my son, his name was, his name is Dax, uh, was going to be born uh, towards December, so I was really excited that one of my kids is not going to even have some, not even close r- memory of yeah. me being an alcoholic. Um, so uh, my dad came and picked me up. I went home for a week. Um, we had a funeral for um, my um, um, for for Dax. Uh, a couple of the men that got out of rehab earlier came to it. It was it was really really. Um, it was really a building moment. Jesus. So I get out of I get out of rehab, and my first day out of rehab, we get home, and I was feeling a little sick, and my wife was feeling a little sick. We got tested, and we got COVID. So I get out of rehab, I get COVID. My wife is now. This is a transition period of bringing uh, your you know someone back from Rogers Ranch sure. back into daily. So so the stress is already high. Mm-hmm. She's used to living by herself, taking care of two other kids yeah. uh, for three months. And now I'm being adopted back into, you know, the day-to-day yeah, operations. Yeah. But now we got all COVID. We all have to stay at home. Um, and uh, it was it was a lot of things happening back to back. Also, I can't hit any meetings because I'm now stuck at home. Right. Hit a couple of online meetings, but they're not the same. Uh, but it was just like, why is all these things happening? Mm-hmm. Um, why am I being tested so much? after coming from this amazing experience. And it's crazy (laughs) because we were warned about this at rehab. They said, something's magical here at Rob's Ranch. While you're within these gates, you are protected. But your addiction and the devil are doing push-ups outside the gate. And right when you leave, you're going to be tried and you're going to be tested. And things are going to go wrong in your life Mm -hmm. that you weren't even expecting uh, from, you know, from your wife having a... uh, a miscarriage, you know, um, you know, I mean, we, we really thought it was, uh, Dax was, you know, going to make it all the way and just, just didn't happen. So, um, but all those things to say, I got out of COVID or out of, um, 
out of out of a uh, quarantine and basically was like all right i gotta get to work so got uh with my uh, sponsor got with uh you know a bunch of different aa groups there was a little bit of a lull period where i was kind of in a depressive state mm -hmm. because i went from having a normal routine trying to get back into yeah. a routine and then also being a real estate agent because i just passed my licensing uh course as i got out of rehab so after i got a rehab i had studied a little bit passed my course um and um go through the academy and so i did all those things and then um then i just said all right let's let's do this so basically i had all the tools i needed went through a couple of trials right out of getting rehab but um you know that's just how life is sometimes yeah. it's you just get tested <sighs> over and over and you never relapsed and all that nope never yeah. relapsed and um but what i realized is i can there's a, there's a term so so relapse is kind of interesting the way I look at rehab and the way I was taught that that or a relapse so the thing I or how I was taught about relapse and rehab was relapse happens way before you take a drink. It actually happens oh. when you start having thoughts about yeah. having a drink where you start or if you quit talking to your sponsor, or you quit going to meetings mm -hmm. or you quit doing using all those things in your tool belt, mm -hmm. you're in relapse. So you need to check yourself then yeah. and say, "Hey, I'm living in relapse. I need to get back to what my what my what my day to day stuff I need to do to stay sober." Um, so, I have relapsed several times. I mean, probably five or six times where I wasn't doing the things I needed to be done. I didn't take a drink, so I didn't ruin my sobriety date, um, which I just hit on a May 27th. So that would be three years. So, wow. wow! Congratulations. That's so there's awesome. a difference between sobriety and relapsing. And people uh, so 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 relapse. So you can be you can still be sober and be in relapse. So sure. so the the thing and I in I guess maybe technical terms relapse is when you take a drink. But mm -hmm. the way they taught us in rehab was relapse yeah. happens way before. I like you're that better. Yeah. When you're yeah. already yeah. When you're mentally, mentally there. when you're mentally you know thinking about how you're going to sneak it or how you're mm -hmm. going to drink. And so when you have those, at least for me, what worked the best was picking up the phone and calling somebody. Mm -hmm. So, hey, what's up, buddy? Like, hey, having bad thoughts. Right. And they're like, hey, so if you went, and then this is what one of my people say. It's like, all right, cool. And then no no judging from the people that I call when I tell them this. They're like, oh, yeah, really? You're thinking about drinking? What do you, what's your plan? Like, what, what are we going to do? And they're like, oh, I was going to go, you know, go, go to the liquor store, buy this, buy this. Oh, cool. All right, do me a favor. Fast forward about four hours. What are you going to do then? Right. Oh, well, I'll probably be trash. All right, tomorrow. What's going to happen? <laughs> right. Like, well, my wife's well, going to kick me out forever. Yeah. And I'm going to go back yeah. to oh, Hotel Carlson. I'll be yeah. back at Rob's Ranch. Um, <laughs> Another so. 90 day stint. So you've yeah. got to stay intentional day to day and, all the time. And, and addiction is such a bitch. Mm -hmm. It's such a bitch. So the two guys that I was in rehab with, um, so about a year, uh, so about about probably three months after we got our rehab, Big Mike relapsed um, and fully relapsed was using again. And uh, my roommate uh, was back to using in about eight months. Mm -hmm. um, about one year to the date that we got out, uh, but no, because no, it was September. Um, I got a call in September, a year after we got, because we got released uh, August something. I forgot what the day we got released. It's like August 20th or something like that. August 24th. I got a call. Uh, Big Mac uh, passed away from mm. uh, drugs. Uh, drug overdose. So they, they, they say at a normal rehab that the success rate for someone to stay sober, I think it's five years, is like less than 10%. Wow. Um, they say at Rob's Ranch is a little bit higher. Um, but, I mean, proof is, in the, or mm -hmm. proof is in the numbers because three guys entered the rehab at that point. Um, on that same day of June 1st and one passed away. One is out using today, um, which I try to call him once a week. And, uh, and then I'm still sober to today, but I know that can change Yeah, just like that. So I need to stay really on it. So what would you say to someone? Because I know that when you don't know what it is, you just know, I like to go out and drink. Like, it's fine. I'm in control. What would you say the, to, to a person who's like, you know, after listening to this, I might have a problem. But how do you distinguish, like, because I, I, I do know people who, when that, you know, it's like, are you an alcoholic? Like, do you, what are the things 
but people are like, no, I'm not an alcoholic. It doesn't control me. But yet, what do you tell those people? Yeah. Like, how do you help them? So when your life has become unmanageable okay. and chaotic. Hmm. So if your life is now unmanageable to where you can't just have one drink, I think that's one of the big first indicators. Yeah. All right, let's pretend that's a beer. All right, drink it. We'll sit here for a little oh, bit. No, no, no. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Oh, I, I, was like, okay, I, I said that. Gonna, I said that really convincingly. <laughs> I said, <laughs> I, I, I said that this. really convincingly. Drink your drink. No, I'm just kidding. Okay. <laughs> no, I'm just actually kidding. going to do it. Yeah, she's going to do it. But <laughs> I mean, it's that, a bubbly. That, yeah, it's a bubbly. Yeah. Uh, I was about to say that's really messed up. If that's a Bud Light. No, 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 no. It's a bubbly. It's, it's a bubbly. No, but but I would say the first indicator is, and once again, I'm not a professional. If you think you're an alcoholic, please go seek professional, you know, professional counselors, uh, drug, yeah. uh, you know, to a doctor, um, do what you guys need to do. I would recommend, you know, maybe going to an AA meeting, mm-hmm. celebrate recovery or come into the recovery group at the refuge. Um, yeah. But I would say the first thing is, can you stop? If you can have a beer and stop and not drink anymore for the rest of the night, you probably don't have a problem. But if you're doing this to an excessive or if you start hiding it, or if you start doing stupid crap like yeah. driving, yeah. like for some reason, I thought I was like Jeff Gordon, the NASCAR driver. When I right. drank, I was like, I want to drive. I don't, even, <laughs> I don't need to drive anywhere. I don't need to go anywhere. I just want to drive. It's so weird. I don't yeah. know why I did that. Um, but I also did a lot of other stupid stuff when I was drinking mm-hmm. too. Sure. So, um, but I would say those are the big, big things. You know, if you can't just have one, if you're starting to hide it, um, if, uh, if, 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 if you're, if you can't manage your life if you're not being there for the kids if you're you know doing stuff like that i would say that's probably the first things that you really need to hone in on is like all right i might have a problem yeah and then go seek help don't be afraid to talk to somebody i mean if you need you need to talk to me um i guess we can put my description or somewhere on the, your name on the will be on the podcast yeah. so that way seriously if you if you feel like <laughs> okay yeah links in the description oh, yeah. if you idea. feel like you are in that place or you're like you know i might have a problem you yeah. know, please reach out to one of us, mm-hmm. direct message, um, Stephen, be proactive. Yeah. Yeah. Be I proactive. I think it's very admirable, not only what you've overcome, but the fact that you're talking about it. Absolutely. Yeah, I really think you. so, because I think it'll help a lot of people. And now your story is like forever etched in the digital realm. Yeah. So <laughs> no, that's a, yeah. No. you can kind of share this with people. Right. No, it's a wow. it was a. I, I have a I have a lender that I work with that that we've known each other for a very long time and um, we were talking one day and he said Stephen um, you need to be tested to have a testimony you need to go Ooh. through trials you mm. need to go through tribulations you need to you need to be tested to have a testimony and that was another thing when he told me that I was like man I got a testimony we all have one we've all been tested. Mm-hmm. Um, and we don't need, and this is something that I probably should have said, we don't need to have a platform to reach other people. I mean, I was reaching people on a one-to-one basis, and that's awesome. Right. So you don't need to be on a, on a, on a, on a really good podcast with really good hosts <laughs> and a really good tech guy. You don't need those things to make a difference in the world. Um, when I got out of rehab, one of my goals was to basically help one person, um, you know, get sober. Or indirectly, you know, help. And I've, I've sure. helped. I have helped a couple of people. It wasn't all because of me. Being or getting sober is so big on yourself. It is one of the. If you ask me, what was hard to the Iron Man or getting sober? Getting sober, hands down, mm. because that race never ends. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, never ends. The Iron Man took me fifteen and a half hours. By the way, really long time. As, I didn't even <laughs> stay awake that long. Yeah. Like, first of all, let's just be clear. <laughs> no, I no, you should ask me what the first long. place guy finished in. The first place guy finished in eight minutes and 12, or eight hours and 12 minutes. Wow. Just so I work figured day. out. He did all of that in eight hours? <laughs> eight hours and 12 minutes. Wow. And I figured he could, he could watch like two Harry Potters and one Lord of the Rings or something like that. He could have went home, took a shower, ate, then watched two big movies and come watch me finish. <laughs> Yeah. Well, like, wow. oh, that's you crazy. still finished. That's amazing. Or you yeah. could have watched a whole season of Love is Blind. I mean, yeah. <laughs> oh, my that, gosh. Do you my watch wife, that? No, my wife watches that all the time. Oh, it's so good. Are you it's, like, why are you watching that? Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. what most men think. <laughs> I've never even heard of like, it. Because it's so sweet it's and so we have sweet. to know it's going to work has, out. Has anybody, has anybody actually stayed married on that? Yeah. Uh, well, like, you mean past Yeah, past the, the yeah. I don't know. I get into rabbit holes in my life. Uh, and so I'm kind of like. I have so you never finish it. 
No, no, I oh. watch it, but I have a favorite couple. But if I start digging in and then find out like it didn't work out, I might be super sad. Oh, I'm so like, that's you right. guys are my power couple. <laughs> like, so is it like a reality yeah. type of show? Yeah, it's like a reality show where they hmm. are in these pods. What's it called? Because he lives a sheltered life. Um, so they're in pods. They don't get to see each other. There's like a screen like two rooms with a screen and they never oh, see each other. I was I was thinking married at first sight. I mean it's kind of the same thing okay. but this one I haven't seen this one is, is sightless. Okay, if okay, you will. Okay, okay, okay. Um so they don't get <laughs> Have you heard of this uh marriage marriage at first sight? Uh-uh. Okay, yeah, you're right. He doesn't watch anything. <laughs> so <laughs> but they're talking to each other for like a week behind these screens and then they find their perfect match based on emotional connection and the sound of someone's voice and it's all very intriguing and then they see each other and there's only been one episode where the dude was the word I want to use is not kind. So he, he was upset. No, he was how she looked. Is that he what was it? a D bag? Can uh-huh. I say it that way? Sure. And <laughs> I said like three cuss words already huh? and you guys haven't said any. <laughs> He faked I tears? think so. Where he walked out, it was like a, a girl that was different, and she was boldly confident in who she was. And he walked out, and he was like, basically, you're not the body type I like. And I was like, sir, you deserve Whoa. to be single the rest of your life. May that's, God give you the blessing of staying single. That's not cool. <laughs> yeah, that's it was so cool. sad. It broke her heart, and she was like, you know, it's okay. I'm used to people, like, not wanting to be with me because I'm a big girl. She was like, but realistically, I know who I am. I know my worth. I know God has a plan for me. And the man that I do meet, because I've had this happen so many times, he's going to love me so good, like, good and unconditional and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, cheers for you. Can we get someone to get this guy <laughs> out of here, please? Let's test it's, him on a different planet. Right. So. Bring, bring him somewhere. Uh, Wow. Um, but I'll just I'll, I'll, I'll say a couple more things because I know I said some deep stuff and yeah, maybe not all heavy. that was really looking positive. But uh, just to give you just to show some positive things that have happened since I got out of rehab, um, I'm very involved with my church. I'm actually run tech for my church now nice. um, and get to reach all six people that watch online every single Sunday. <laughs> um, but no, it's 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 it's, it's wonderful. Um, I get to be part of an amazing Tuesday night group called Recovery Group. Uh, like I said, it's at the Refuge Owasso in Owasso. Um, it is. We meet on Tuesday nights at the church at six thirty. Love to see or see anybody that wants to come there. Yeah. Um, actually, had a baby girl um, in on September. No, sorry, November twenty second. Um, <laughs> And my, 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 my son's birthday is in September. So uh, yeah, you my almost daughter got Fallon, <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, my daughter Fallon was born November 22nd wow. um, of 2021. Yep. Because she just turned one this past year. Nice. Um, so we have her and she's into everything, walking, just into everything. That's um, awesome. Also got into real estate, started a YouTube channel. I have over 2,000 subscribers, which I'm really. That's amazing. Yeah, I'm really proud yeah. of that. Really happy about that. Um, have a lot of people watching it. Yeah, we'll Actually, put that in the bio. Yeah. Too, oh, thank for you. Sure. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, doesn't talk about rehab stuff. So or, yeah, or but sobriety. People so buy houses. Looking at that, look at sobriety. Like, sorry, it talks about Tulsa stuff. <laughs> you might enjoy that too. <laughs> but if you want to learn about Tulsa, yeah, if you want to learn yeah. about Tulsa, you know, watch that. Exactly. Um, and basically, at that, and that's really cool because I get paid to market now. So I YouTube pays me to make videos. No kidding. So yeah, so I so get at two thousand subscribers, a uh, thousand thousand subscribers, and then four four thousand. 400. Is it 400, watch hours? 400 watch hours or 4,000 watch hours? It might be 4,000. Yeah, it's one of those two. Um, so I hit that and so wow. I get paid. Congratulations. Yeah. I mean, is I it pay $25 you know, a month. Does so. it come from like ad revenue? Is that what yeah, it is? Yeah, ad revenue. So that's I have pretty ads, cool. there, ads that jump up on my video. Hey, that's but, attainable, people. Yeah. A no. thousand subscribers, 4,000 watch hours. Yep. You just got to stay consistent. Stay consistent. Yep. Made a lot of videos. We're on the road. We're, We're on the road. On the road. Yeah. You'll get there. You'll get there. It took, it took me about a year. About a, about a year, but I was very consistent every single. But you guys have been very consistent, so I'm proud of you guys. Just <laughs> keep on posting. Um, but you know, starting a YouTube channel uh, in 2021, my first full year because I actually got into real estate in October of 2020. But mm-hmm. my first full year, uh, I helped over uh, 17 or no, yeah, 20 people or 21 people move to Tulsa from different states and uh, wow. did close to six million my first year. 
and Ooh. one rookie of the year for my company, Cobalt Bank. Congratulations. So, Six million in a year for yep. a rookie is yep. very That's impressive. That's phenomenal. And then this year I have done um, over $10 million, uh, and have done over 35 transactions. The people you brought in, were wow. they part of the... Tulsa Remote. Yeah, yeah. Tulsa Remote. So if you, you are looking to move to Tulsa and Tulsa Remote, we've got some specialists. Yep, yep. So, okay. and actually, I have a video about Tulsa Remote. So maybe you can just yeah. put in the video. And Tulsa Remote's the ten thousand dollar grant. Yeah, that's right, what Erica to, was talking Eric about. Eric and Cody are here. Yep. Our last guests yep. were here. At yep, Tulsa yep. Remote. Tulsa Remote. Uh, yeah. They're here for Tulsa Remote, right? Yep. Yeah, yeah. And sh- would you guys, if you haven't seen that podcast, it's awesome. There are two <laughs> fitness people, which I'm also a fitness people, uh, but I've kind of been out of it, so I've gained a couple of lbs. But they have really interesting. And, and we like, had uh, squat. The, the dog. Up. Yep, yep, yep. Oh, yeah, the winner dog. Yeah. Yep. No, no, it's Dotson. 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 Yeah. Dotson. Yeah. Aren't they the same? Maybe not. They kind of look the same. I don't know. I wouldn't. Totally I wouldn't. I, I would totally we probably know, just guys. offended them, though. <laughs> yeah, Sorry, super Erica. Super so, I don't know my dog. So please. getting sober has been one of the uh, craziest journeys of my life. Very grateful. Um, and, you know, it's been awesome. So That's our buddy. Yeah coming on in so oh, well thank you for so being here we appreciate you <laughs> yeah, and congratulations you. on your sobriety yeah thank you yeah man thank you appreciate Welcome it to Tulsa Uncut. thanks yeah. for coming bye guys yeah awesome good timing <laughs>